Hello, friends of the elementals and keepers of the fire. It's Tom Gingrass, and I want to welcome you back to my site. Uh, and I'm hoping to cover some ground today uh, discussing the DHC 2000 Cobra Torch uh, by Detroit Torches. Uh, it's an entire welding system, uh, really, uh, with uh, low pressure uh, gas uh, regulators that uh, give you um, efficient and uh, inexpensive um, flow of gases. Uh, and they're, um, they are unique uh, for me. Um, this company is making available to you the finest oxy fuel welding equipment possible uh, with oxyacetylene, acetylene air mix, and oxypropane. Uh, all these components are available uh, through Detroit Torch. And the Cobra Torch has been time tested for over 30 years, proving out that it's ma made in America a commitment to unmatched quality uh, is in place. Uh, I couldn't do this uh, without personalizing uh, my contribution. I had uh, used another brand for over 36 years and um, it, it, uh, I had a student uh, at our community college uh, in the welding program, it was actually art metals and metal sculpture. And um, she um, had this torch and she made it, uh, she was adamant about using that torch every class period and I couldn't understand why. And it was the Cobra pistol grip torch this torch here um, and uh, you know it's different yeah most of the other torches are straight bodied uh, they don't have a pistol grip uh, and so there's some engineering things that I thought were unique about the torch uh, to begin with uh, and it piqued my interest so eventually I uh, got some money together and I decided to buy uh, a Cobra torch and uh, it's changed the way I do business. Uh, the first thing I welded it with it uh, was a nine foot six inch dragon uh, that I was building for uh, one of the holes on a putt-putt golf course. Um, and I was initially impressed by how well um, I was coached by the videos uh, that came with it and the, and the written literature as well. Um, but I found capacities beyond my imagination uh, to be strikingly evident in the first few days and weeks of working exclusively with it. In fact, I was so impressed with the torch that I wrote um, a long letter of gratitude to the company, and, which I never do. Uh, and after deciding that I would like to share my fascination with the torch with as many people as possible, I became a sales rep for Cobra torches. So if you see this video and you want to buy a torch, uh, I'm not pushing anything. I think if you have a torch already, you're one of the lucky ones. Uh, but this torch is unique uh, and it has capabilities, in my opinion, beyond the capabilities of other torches that are out there. Um, and it is American made as well. Um, so I hope to do this line of uh, products justice uh, and let's give it a try. Okay, the first uh, advantages um, that I have perceived from the, uh, from the literature, from the website, uh, first of all, it is made in America. Uh, and one of the things that I, I think that needs to be implied with that is um, the idea about quality uh, in the product. And that's always been sort of an American, uh, American product, product um, stamp, if you will. Um, and I, I still want to believe that and tend to believe that. And I know that in the case of this torch, uh, after using it for many years now, uh, I have found nothing wrong with this torch. Okay, um, there's uh, expansive capabilities uh, with a comparable price. Uh, so, I mean, if you're shopping for a torch, uh, like I say, if you have one, great. But if you're shopping for a torch, 
uh, please look at this torch carefully. Uh, and I would consider don't use the uh, high pressure industrial regulators. Um, I just got a phone call from a guy this last weekend that said that uh, he tried and tried to use this torch and all he had was those industrial high powered regulators, high, high pressure regulators and the torch didn't perform well. And Cobra makes regulators that go right along with the torch, uh, small diameter hoses for greater efficiency. Um, and the whole thing is engineered to save you money and, and do great things for you. Okay, the sizes of uh, the tips go from tiny, tiny jewelry tips. Um, I have one here. I don't know if you can see the size of that orifice without us getting too fuzzy, fuzzy, but it's very small. And in my opinion, it's smaller than the um, triple lot uh, tips for other torches. Um, and there are also large uh, diameter tips that are great for forging or for um, doing large heating. Uh, there's also uh, what's known as a rosebud tip. That's this guy here, multiple holes in the end. Um, this is a powerhouse uh, and you have to turn your gas pressure up high or the torch will pop and you know make everyone in the house upset because you're trying to blow up the house. Um, but uh, anyway, the, the, that's the, that's, there's another shorter barrel version of this um, uh, rosebud as well. Um, there's an ergonomic cast aluminum pistol grip torch body, uh, which I find to be well balanced. Um, I, use, I use mine in multiple positions. I might use it up here. You don't need the trigger unless you're cutting. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I hold it back here a lot of times. Uh, this gets your hand further away from the heat um, and you know gives you a, a little bit greater freedom uh, to find your own comfort zone. Uh, I also use it this way and use it like a pencil, but um, it is obviously to my advantage uh, ergonomically um, when I hold the torch in that position. Okay, there's a mixing chamber just before the uh, Venturi styled uh, tip. And when I say Venturi style, I mean that it's reduced. It's a conical uh, opening and it uh, goes down from a wider um, orifice to a, a narrow orifice, which builds the uh, intensity of the pressure. Um, okay, uh, th through the mix, the, the mixing creates greater efficiency. And um, therefore, you uh, use fewer consumables and you, um, I, I'm amazed at how quickly the metal gets heated up um, when I'm using this torch. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's a, there's a lot of savings in not only time, but in the amount of gas that you put into a project. Okay, um, you save over 50 to 70% uh, on the gases. That's awesome. I mean, that's huge. Um, if you have a project where you're using two or three tanks of uh, both oxygen and acetylene, uh, you've, you're way down the road in terms of the savings uh, with this torch. Unique metric tips. Uh, and the, the, that's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's um, its own uh, tip cleaner. You can't use standard uh, tip cleaners on the torch, um, but uh, for me, the different tip sizing uh, is so efficient. Um, it, it, it covers all bases for me, from, like I said, jewelry style right up to big forging and big heating. Um, so each tip size uh, has a greater range of possible heats. Uh, and that's something I'm throwing in on my own uh, pretty much. I, I noticed that um, I can dial in um, just by using increments of maybe two inches when I add the acetylene and then add the oxygen. I can, I can dial in a lot of different varieties of heat uh, with that as well as the oxidizing and carburizing flames if I need those. Um, there are two cutting attachments and a wheel set. Uh, one is for one inch thick material and the other one uh, is for thin material. 
This one here is for the thin material and it's called an undercutter. Uh, and let me show you this, get ready for this. Okay, this is the entire mechanism all set up. Uh, there, there's an arrow on the uh, button here. Uh, this is your cutting attachment. This is your cutting button. You turn it so that the arrow is down. Uh, that frees the button. You can feel it uh, change inside the torch, I mean, inside the, um, the handle. Uh, and this one is a, the overcutter, and it is for cutting thicker material. Uh, the wheel set here, these guys uh, spin freely, they're me metal. Uh, I can't really show you, I don't have anything flat to show you with, but I'll just let you hear it. And I can put a straight edge against the edge of this wheel, and I can roll the torch along the wheel, and this is far enough away from the wheel that if you're using a piece of flat stock or whatever, um, it's free from the heat so you don't get any warpage on it or weirdness with it. Um, you just press on through. When this is cutting, the torch tip, the cutting tip is pretty much laid right on the surface of the steel. And it blows through uh, really clean and it will cut with plasma quality, which is, if any of you use plasma, you know the, the ability of the plasma cutter to create less slag on the back side and create a really uh, thin cut, like a sixteenth of an inch width cut, where you don't have a lot of waste of material. This will do the same thing. And this one will cut up to a one inch, one inch material, uh, probably from about a quarter of an inch to one inch um, uh, with this, this torch tip. You don't need to have the wheels on it. Uh, if you want to cut a bevel, you can just simply change one wheel and all of a sudden you're beveled. Okay, so it's a pretty ingenious, no, it's a very ingenious um, uh, bit of engineering that has gone into this. Mr. Dillon from Australia uh, lived in the outback and he was a metal worker. Um, and he didn't like to go to town so um, and buy, buy more gases all the time. So he uh, machined this tip, uh, this torch himself and uh, built it and um, made all kinds of things that I think are really uh, incredible changes uh, in the direction of uh, a better product. Okay, um, see that, yeah, you have uh, a, the unique t um, trigger style rather than a thumb, uh, thumb application for the cutter. Um, that, that also is, you know, you're in touch with the handle and every part of it when you're doing your cuts with the, with the Cobra. Um, it'll weld uh, copper, it'll weld aluminum, it'll weld brass, uh, mild, mild and stainless steels, uh, and cast iron. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of people that are oxyacetylene aficionados uh, can do those things. Um, but um, it's pretty amazing uh, when you uh, adjust your flame for stainless steel and you find yourself running a really pretty bead uh, with an oxyacetylene uh, welder. Okay, there are also some other advantages. Um, when you buy the Pro Master Kit, um, it's an extra $150. Um, and uh, let me say that I better, better not be misspeaking on the price, okay? But I think it's 150 bucks. And um, the, um, the Pro Master Kit has extra tips in it. Uh, one and a half is the one that I use all the time. Uh, and that's one of the tips in it. A two and a half is the almost biggest um, uh, cutting attachment, I mean, a, a heating torch tip and, and welding thicker material. And, um, uh, and, and it has some smaller tips as well. So if you're doing jewelry type work or any of that kind of really tiny soldering work, uh, the, the Cobra's the torch, man. Uh, also, there are these extensions, which are part of the Pro Master Kit. Uh, I use this guy all the time. Uh, I'm uh, very often in my forms that I'm making, uh, there are spaces and I weld the inside as well as the outside. So there's a lot of time spent 
uh, with the torch, but uh, I used to just struggle to get as much of the torch in the hole as I could um, in order to make uh, backside weldings. Uh, and in this case, I just put this guy on and uh, go and blow. And it, I can use any torch tip size I want on it. Uh, it just, you know, it goes into the butt of the, the barrel of the torch here. Uh, so you're taking all this out. Uh, and that's a nice feature as well. It makes for greater flexibility to have uh, two, uh, um, several ways of hooking up your, your attachments. This guy is an acetylene only. If you were to buy an acetylene-only torch, it would cost you several hundred dollars uh, because you got to get the regulator for propane and you got to get the hose, you know, and all that stuff. Um, with the Cobra, you get this in the ProMaster kit. So you've got a lot of advantages in the ProMaster kit. Okay, so let's move on, and I want to talk about some things that I find uh, to be unique. Um, uh, and maybe even beyond the, some of the literature um, in the, um, in, that, that comes with the torch. Um, my, uh, in my, these are personal obs observations based on hours of concentrated experience and observation. And I mean that experience, yeah, I'm old, okay? And uh, so a few years, a few hours behind the uh, torch and uh, that's experience, okay? Um, but also the moment, the experiencing the moment with the puddle and watching what uh, a smooth, really smooth, um, I don't know how to explain it. It feels like there's, there's less oxygen in the, in the puddle, in the less bubbling oxygen in the puddle. And, um, and uh, therefore the, the metal seems more syrupy to me when I'm working with the Cobra Torch. Okay, the torch tips allow for many flame adjustment possibilities for each tip size. I covered that a little bit uh, um, a while ago. But uh, it allows the artistic person to dial in specific amounts of heat for specific purposes. This can lead to discovering your greater ability to wait for the heat. You have patience, right? It's a necessary part of oxyacetylene welding. Uh, and to build slowly to the melting point maybe with a smaller tip with a smaller orifice. Um, sometimes it's better to use a smaller tip and just wait longer for the metal to get to the molten temperature. But I've welded even 16th inch thick material with a very, very tiny Cobra, the zero Cobra tip, um, and gotten a really just TIG type uh, weld, very narrow and very clean and very well penetrated weld. Um, okay, uh, and so sometimes you have to bring up the temperature slowly in order to protect other things that uh, have been welded prior to. Um, a, a good case in point is when you're building, when you're welding hair onto, uh, onto a, a figure uh, and you want to have it as close together as, as you can to be convincing, but at the same time you don't want to be melting off the work that you've already done. Okay, or you can take a larger tip uh, in some cases, depending on the thickness of the base metal, um, and uh, you can just go in and get the, the work done. Uh, you know, go and blow and get it, uh, get deep penetration on the, on the weld right away uh, and get your work done and get out of there uh, so that the heat doesn't have time to dissipate to other things in the surrounding area. Um, and sometimes that's, you know, like if you have a braze and you have to go back and fix a uh, weld with, you know, with the steel next to a braze, then you want to be able to get in and get out uh, and not, not melt the, uh, the brazed part. Okay, so, and so you're protecting your surrounding details, uh, and that's a, that's a definite advantage. Um, and this requires an assertive attitude, uh, for sure, with the, especially with a bigger tip. Um, but uh, it's uh, definitely, um, to have those options and to know that they exist um, is a real boon, I think. Okay, uh, the regu regular, regulated gas, gas pressures um, that are recommended 
are, you know, they come with every torch. Um, I know one brand off, uh, you know, suggests that you use five and five. Uh, and I think the Cobra recommends that you use four and four. I personally um, use higher pressures, and I know that's more expensive, but I want to get the work done, and I want to be able to um, control the puddle. Uh, so if I'm welding a surface that has a curve in it, and the curve is upward, I don't want to have to go over to my tanks and crank up the pressure when I want to weld uphill, for instance. Um, and, uh, and especially if I'm having to sculpt a part of the surface to make a, a groove or a, a crevice, um, or if I want to keep a, a ridge on the edge of a, of a piece, I'll want to um, have that, that greater control. Okay, so uh, I, I use seven pounds and 11 pounds on the oxygen. Uh, and like I said before, a one and a half tip is a godsend for me. It's the, it's, I don't know if it's the equivalent of any other torch tip out there, but uh, to me, it's the one that I use most in most of my work. I do a lot of stuff with quarter inch uh, round bar, three eighths round bar, half inch round bar. Um, and you know some sheet uh, and uh, eighth inch thick uh, strap material. Okay, um, in other so so the uh, welded surface becomes the final texture in what I do. Uh, it's the contour. It's the indentation or bulging. Uh, it's the general con conjunction um, based on the distance from the surface and the torch angle. Okay, and th those two things are, are the, you find out uh, as you advance, and it's not just about heat coming off of the weld flame uh, at the tip. You can also use uh, the edge of the flame, for instance. Some de details can even um, be accomplished that way. Um, and I can show you an example here. Uh, this guy is my Halloween surprise, okay? There he is. Okay, and you can see the detail under under the eyes. Where am I? Uh, it's hard to do this in the mirror. Um, uh, yeah, so you can see these details, the details on the eyes. Look how crisp the line is around the eyes. And that's because I used quarter inch round bar and tacked it in uh, into the eye o opening uh, and then only welded the backside, the outside. Um, and went all the way around, but I was able to control the heat and keep it from going around, okay? When you weld round stock, if you shoot the heat in the middle, it wraps all the way around it. But when you're doing stuff like this, you wanna keep the heat just on one side and not let it wrap around um, and go to the inside. Otherwise that will melt and it'll become irregular and you'll have to go back and fix it. But little details, uh, little things here on the edge, little things here on the edge, uh, and trying to control. That's just a 60, I mean, an eighth inch rod uh, laid on top of a piece of um, probably 20 gauge sheet material uh, and then welded only on that one side. Okay, so a lot of detail and a lot of weird stuff can come out of your head, right? These ridges here along the side a uh, quarter inch rod because I wanted it to be a little bit thicker and a little bit weirder. Um, so, uh, and then I've got this little ponytail thing here in the back. I don't know if you can see that, but it it's forged to a square um, and a point uh, and then twisted uh, with a regular uh, heat movement. Uh, I want to I want to get it so that it's twisting slowly. Well, this is actually a reverse twist, they call it. Um, so you heat, do a half twist, and then get off of it, go somewhere else and play, and then come back to it and twist the opposite way. But anyway, uh, fun stuff. I'll show you more about that kind of thing uh, later on as we go. But it makes for really cool stuff that you can, you can do, uh, send home to mom for Christmas, okay? Um, all right, um, so a so lot of advantages with this Cobra Torch thing that I've found. Um, and, uh, you know, to be able to manipulate this hard, cold material 
and be able to do such cool stuff with it um, is just amazing, doing organic fluid forms. <coughs> Pardon me. It's time for a break. Okay, so um, in most of my work, the welded surface becomes the final texture, as I said before. Um, and uh, so lips and eyebrows and wrinkles and uh, gentle conjunctions uh, based on the distance of the flame from the surface uh, and the uh, torch angle. If I angle the torch at a greater angle, the heat's going to skim like a rock on the surface of a pond. Uh, and it'll be, um, it'll be colder. But if you use that and use it well, um, you can keep the temperature cool, uh, still get it molten by going straight down, but then change the angle on it and go right up against the edge of something that you want to maintain and, and um, you know, still have enough heat to do the weld. But uh, it, that skimming heat will be cooler and you'll have greater control. Okay. Um, uh, so some, some details accomplished by using uh, the side of the flame uh, uh, and actually using the edge of the heat envelope. So that means if this was the flame, that means coming in like this to the edge. And that's how I do those details like the eyebrows on the weird guy. It's just by putting the heat right on the edge of the, of the material that I'm um, heating. Uh, and it works great uh, for detail control. Okay, um, the, the torch to me was wisely conceived and very, very, very well engineered. Um, and the, in, you know, the efficiency um, is, you know, a real boon when it comes to pragmatic metalworking, uh, and both in techniques and in application. I consider the Pro Master Pack to be an absolute necessity for the skilled craftsperson. Not only do you have available all the oxyacetylene tips, including the most importantly, uh, to me, including the most important one, the number one and a half, um, but you also have uh, those two eight, eight inch extensions, uh, the curved one. Uh, this guy here can be used uh, for welding behind something. Like if you had a machine uh, that was costing thousands of dollars to the manufacturer and it was down, and it had a broken part on the back side of the machine, you can actually weld with a mirror uh, behind, or, or yeah, you probably braze if it was cast iron. Um, but you can do that work without having to unbolt the machine from the floor and have the forklift driver come over and pick it up and do all that stuff. Uh, so there's advantages to this, but I don't use this as much um, uh, uh, as the other one by, sh by a long shot, but I, when I need it and I have it, it's great. Um, so yeah, keep in mind that those two uh, extensions are really, um, really important. Okay, let's see where, what else I have to say here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm too casual, pardon me, you know, I'm just not a suit. Uh, I don't do that, I don't do that well. All right, last little bit of information here. Um, <clears throat> there's also uh, one of the, the other amazing things about the Cobra and, D, uh, and Detroit Torch uh, and their vision uh, is to make a complete set of propane uh, torch tips as well. Uh, and I don't use those much, but I can tell you if you're working with uh, some materials uh, that um, are heat, let's say heat sensitive, um, like uh, stainless steel. Um, it's uh, really good to not oxidize the stainless. So you wanna use uh, lower temperatures, uh, but you might need a bigger torch tip to carry the heat that is required to bend that material. I don't know if that made sense, but yeah, you don't, you don't um, necessarily have to uh, have a blasting flame uh, or you especially don't want to have a blasting flame when you're working with stainless and even uh, silicon bronze wants to be cleaned um, or clean when you're working with it. 
uh, copper will oxidize and you'll get uh, flaking on the surface, uh, for instance, when you use too much heat. So that's another um, plus to me um, in, in all that we're seeing here. Um, I've worked on a piece before where I needed to have propane for my bending stuff um, prior to uh, prior to the welding, and uh, and the propane works great for that uh, as well. Okay, uh, and there's also map gas, um, which a lot of welders use, but it's in, in, it's considered to be, welding with map gas is considered to be uncontrollable, uh, in part because it's so hot. But, um, you know, I'm, uh, I never tried it with uh, the Cobra, but um, I'm tempted, okay? And uh, I might get around to it in the next 30 years. Okay, uh, for the blacksmith, um, yeah, who is legendarily cobbled to the forge, uh, you'll find greater freedom of expression through more controllable heat, specifically when dialing in a concentrated heat for forge welding or when uh, creating uh, unique textures and patterns uh, for twisted stock applications. Um, you may also practice welding beveled butt joints and square stock that will yield expertly welded square corners and uh, look almost like the original material without the MIG or TIG welded, overfilled and ground back, oops, too much look. Uh, that can only be sandblasted back to near uniformity. Uh, hand wrought is beautiful, okay? Uh, so if you can weld those corners back on square stock, and make it look square like it's supposed to look, uh, you've got a leg up. But if you're trying to, you know, MIG weld and do a blurby thing, a thing on there and then uh, grind it back, um, the chances of not getting it, uh, getting it aligned are really great. Um, how do I know? In there. Okay, the expense is, uh, you know, you, you show up with a gate that you've done and you've worked so many hours on and you've got these places that are, you know, yeah, they're uneven. Uh, it's noticeable. Okay, the expense is competitive with the overall value and it's unmatched in this present marketplace. And I did mention that um, though designed by Mr. Dillon uh, many decades ago, this torch is made in Detroit by Detroit torches and America making, in America, making them good for you. Okay, and I wanted to make my final point autobiographically. Uh, I'll, I've welded for over 50 years, taught community college art metals and sculpture for over 30 um, and had used the name brand torch for 36 of those years uh, and the DHC changed the way I do business. Uh, um, uh, on my first project, I was uh, welding a, um, a dragon uh, and I told you that earlier. Um, but it was, the part I didn't tell you was that it was three o'clock in the morning and I had two wings um, that were unfinished. They had the structure, three, three half inch round bars in the front uh, and webbing, uh, three sections of webbing uh, with probably 24 inch long half inch round bars. And I had 14 gauge sheet uh, and I cut the sheets with the, with the uh, cutter that I just showed you. Um, and uh, clamped them up onto the ribbing and I needed to deliver this thing to a show at eight o'clock in the morning and I made it. Okay, and I was so blown away that I could just tack weld it in the, well, you don't want to tack weld too far ahead, but you can tack weld a couple of tacks um, and then start, uh, start your weld um, and what I saw at the end was that the heat ribbing, the color that comes off of the heat uh, that you've welded with, uh, the oxidation colors, they're like rainbows along the edge. Those were the same width all the way around the welds that I'd made. So it actually enhanced the beauty of the 
of the work that I'd done. Uh, and I was really taken back. So I, wrote, I welded probably 30 feet of, um, yeah, of uh, st steel, uh, thin to thick, uh, and I have a video uh, with that name. Uh, and um, yeah, and it's, you know, it's an amazing piece of work. So um, I want to thank you um, for watching my videos, for tuning in. I want to uh, let you know that I'm, uh, I am a sculptor. I do commission work. Um, I want to, my, my email address is TJ torch art and if I can figure out the video part of this I'll overlay that on my on my video um, tjtorchart at gmail.com uh, let me know if you are interested in the torch or if you've enjoyed this video uh, please leave a comment uh, and I'll uh, I would love to I love to talk to people about good quality stuff, whether it's good quality workmanship, uh, good quality equipment, uh, good quality thought, uh, and good quality feelings. Uh, because I think uh, as human beings, we're here on the planet to learn to cultivate our goodness um, and to be compassionate and loving and caring for each other. Okay, and that's a higher pathway. Okay, hate and violence is easy. It's easy. The hard stuff is to be caring and loving. All right, so uh, I want to thank you, explorers of the elementals and keepers of the fire. And please, uh, I'll be making some more videos. Um, I'm going to be doing a free workshop um, on uh, demystifying. Uh, welding and metalwork, and I'll be doing some classes online uh, as soon as I can find out where to land them, okay? Uh, and that will be upcoming soon. I'm hoping by November 1st or November 10th or somewhere in there, I'll start offering some classes for you guys to sit in on, okay? Can you teach welding online? You can teach welding understanding online. Okay? And that's my challenge and that's my mission. Thank you all for tuning in. Take care.